Hello everyone. As you know, I am Paul, your e-hobby guy. Today we're going to do an in-depth review of this voltmeter ammeter. Very low cost, about $3 from eBay. We'll look at exactly how to wire it up for power and to wire it for a current reading. And if it's good enough, I'm going to use it to repair my broken benchtop voltmeter. We'll also check its readings to see if they fall within the specs and we'll do an in-depth review of that. So let's jump right in. Okay, so here is my uh, benchtop power supply with its old broken uh, voltmeter. I built this power supply about 25 years ago um, from a circuit that I got in a radio shack. A few weeks after I bought this voltmeter, it just stopped working and at the time it was expensive and so it was kind of annoying that it broke so quickly and so I have been just using my multimeter for most of the lifetime of this power supply and so when I saw these voltmeters appear on eBay I figured let's just give it a try and I would add some extra functionality by getting the current reading as well as the volt reading and so We'll take this apart, um, take a look at the back, get this voltmeter out, and then do uh, a little test on the new one and see if we can repair this benchtop power supply with this new voltmeter ammeter from eBay. First, I would like to take a quick look at the wiring diagram to see how we should wire it up into my power supply so that we can have a full understanding of what we do when I wire this thing together. One thing I do want to point out uh, about this wiring diagram is that we are measuring both voltage and current that is within the range of the meter. What I mean by that is the meter is rated at 3.5 to 30 volts. I will not be reading any other voltages that are higher because my benchtop power supply is only capable of 30 volts. We can wire it up this way for that reason. So if you do want to measure a voltage that's higher than what the meter is rated, in this case 30 volts, then you have to supply the meter power individually or separately from the load power. In other words, in my case here, I would just have a completely separate, isolated 12 volt power supply um, providing power for just a meter. And then my benchtop power would come um, in here to the red, black, and blue, and it would be completely separate and capable of up to 10 amps. My power supply is only capable of 3 amps, so I, I'm never going to exceed that. I just wanted to make that clear. In my case, I can join red to black to this red to black because I'm operating within the range of what the meter is capable of. The 3.5 to 30 volts. Um, otherwise, again, you would provide, if you're going above 30 volts to your load, because this is rated to measure up to 100 volts, if you are going anywhere from 30 to 100 volts, you would provide separate power for the meter. Otherwise, you would burn the meter out. But I'm not doing that, and so for this reason, I can join red to red and black to black. And so we can move on from there. Just be aware of that. This is one method of doing it because it falls within the parameters of what I need for my uh, benchtop power supply. So this is the meter, and you have two sets of wires the light wires which I, I wrote here red and black. These are used to power the entire meter. And this is what that looks like. Like I showed you, once the meter is powered, we have the three heavy gauge wires which are using this bigger plug here. These heavier wires are these three wires, red, black, and blue. In order to get a voltage reading, you can use the red wire as a probe and you'll get a voltage reading if the meter is tied into the same negative. In order to have a reading on the meter for current we have to run the red wire as the positive and have the blue wire pass through the meter 
and into your negative um, here. So your load gets its positive, which is tied to the two reds, and the negative is coming from the blue on the meter. Now this particular, uh, I think I showed you earlier, this goes, the voltmeter goes up to 100 volts and the current can read up to 10 amps. I don't know if I can get it too clear here, but um, 10 amps. Now my power supply only goes up to 3 amps, so I'm not going to overload it in that respect. And I go to just over 30 volts on the power supply also uh, with this variable. So, just in quick review. Two reds are tied together, two blacks are tied together. To give your load voltage, if you want to get a current reading, tie the red to your load as the positive, but bring the negative through the meter. The negative is going to come from the heavy black into the meter and come out the blue. So to hook up your load, hook up the red wire as positive and the blue wire as negative, and you'll get a reading for the current that's flowing through your load. Let's take a look at what I put together here on my desktop. And then, once we've proved that out, we'll integrate it into my power supply and see how it performs. Okay, so what I've done here, just to create a little load, is I put these um, low resistance, high wattage uh, resistors in series. There's three 4.7 uh, ohm resistors. Uh, just over 14 ohms. They're 10 watt resistors. And as you can see, I just kept it around 13 volts. This is what popped up here. If you look at my four channel voltmeter, I got 12.9. It flickered between 13 and 12.9. So that is uh, encouraging. It's very close. It doesn't need to be calibrated. And so what I haven't done is I haven't hooked up the negative for this load yet. So there's nothing, there's only a positive. So um, the circuit is going from here, through here, around here, and this is the end. And so in order to get current flowing, I'm going to attach the negative from the blue wire out the back of this ammeter onto my load and let's see what happens. Well, that's about right. Now the voltage did drop down. That's not unusual. Just for confirmation, I actually uh, hooked my fluke in series with this ammeter as a, as a double cross check. And you can see the accuracy is right there. Uh, 830 milliamps, 0.83 amps. It's right on the money, um, which is actually surprising. I did expect some calibration to be necessary. At the back of this, there, it, there are two trim potentiometers to calibrate, uh, one to calibrate the voltmeter and one to calibrate the ammeter. So this is all done with jumpers coming directly out of my power supply. I will have to drill another binding post for the current reading if I do want to monitor current. Uh, I would have to switch over from the negative binding post to a blue one if I have a blue one. If I don't, I'll just use whatever color I do have on a binding post to get a current reading for whatever I might be working on. But I have to say, in first, uh, first review, first uh, power-up, it's been very, very encouraging. And so what I'm going to do is take some measurements over... A range of currents and we'll see what we get from there just as a report on how this performs because of its price now once again I just want to reiterate this is not meant to be a high precision voltmeter or ammeter but for my purposes it's going to work very well compared to what I used to have which was nothing at all an old analog broken voltmeter and so I'm actually kind of excited so I am going to actually tie it uh, twist the wires on to my power supply itself and re-verify what I just did. But first, I am going to take some readings at different ranges and record what this says and what my, my fluke says as far as voltage is concerned and as far as 
current is concerned. We'll review those results at the end. And so at this point, I'm just going to jump right into showing you how I built this meter into my benchtop power supply. As it turns out, I have this old piece of scrap metal lying around. So uh, I think I'll use this. So I just measured out the size that I needed. Then I marked it on my piece of sheet metal, uh, the exact size that I needed, and I cut it out with my cutting tool. In order to make the hole for the meter to fit in, that was a little more challenging, and so I had to measure the size of the meter and mark it centrally located onto my piece of sheet metal. I then drilled it, cut it, and used my nibbling tool to cut out the exact size that I needed to make it fit precisely in place. Once I did that, I painted it black to make it look a little better. I drilled some pilot holes for some screws and then I just screwed it in place. Before I could mount the meter though I did have to extend the wires so I soldered on some extensions to each of the wires and then I uh, covered them with some shrink tubing and then I was ready to mount. As I said earlier I did need an additional blue binding post which I did happen to have one so I um, drilled for that and I screwed it in place and it looks just fine where it is. Then I was able to hook up all the wire internally according to the schematic and screw the plate with the meter in place. And this is what it looks like uh, all hooked up with my load wired through my blue binding post getting a current reading. I'm actually quite pleased with it. I do have to say I did calibrate it slightly because it seemed like whenever whatever I was doing to work with it, it drifted a little. So I did use the two trim pots at the back of the meter to bring the readings in closer. And so I took some readings before I did that and some readings after and we'll look at that right now. So here are the results. I do have to mention the re readings that I took before I calibrated I had to just throw out. They were no good. I made some mistakes. But as you can see here I have an accuracy of plus or minus 1% uh, specified. Everything that I measured in about 10 points is below that 1% and above 0. So I was very pleased with what I got. Everything was in the positive range between 0 and 1% of my actual reading. And so everybody that wraps up today's video. I hope you liked it. I certainly learned a lot this time. I hope it was useful to you. If it was, please leave a comment below telling me about it. If you have any other requests for other videos, please you could also leave them in comments down below. Like this video, subscribe, follow me on social media, and thank you for watching.